this time of year, it is uh, November. Every time I put the star flight away, I have to assume that I'm going to not be able to fly it for another four weeks because of bad weather. Uh, I got a really short flight today, uh, 15 minutes. Although it's very calm and very nice at the ground, there's some turbulence because it's midday and it just wasn't comfortable. And so uh, I decided that uh, I would wait for a little better weather for flying or maybe a little uh, later in the day, a little, little earlier in the day, sometime when it's a little more calm. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is we're going to drain the carburetor. By draining the carburetor bowl, we end up with no fuel that would be a problem. Um, and I'm going to gently squeeze the fuel line here to essentially pump out the extra fuel that's between the diaphragm pump and the carburetor. That way, I'll end up with a uh, with no fuel in the carburetor, even if it sets for several days or several weeks before I can fly again. I'm really hopeful of getting another flight in, but uh, another few flights even. Uh, but I don't know. It's it's late in the year. Um, and it is, after all, Nebraska. Today, um, it's probably about 40 to 45 degrees. It feels warmer than that in the sun, but in the shade, it's definitely chilly. Okay, so I've drained the carburetor bowl. I've drained the fuel line up to the diaphragm pump. The rest is working its way back through and it's, and it's going to work its way down so that uh, most of it goes back into the tank. Um, give it a visual once over. Everything seems to be fine. I, like I said, I'm just a little nervous uh, because of uh, getting bounced around by, by a little bit of thermal activity. Um, in a little bit we better weather, I probably would delight in that and uh, go looking for um, Go looking for something to fly in that would be uh, uh, fun of getting me up a few thousand feet. Anyway, um, that really is about all I have to do. Uh, to, I, I, by the way, I add uh, some fuel stabilizer to my fuel all through uh, the, the months of October, November, December, uh, right through to spring. Um, it helps a little bit, um, helps guarantee that the fuel uh, won't accumulate water in it. Um, anyway. One more thing I'm going to check. I'm going to check the fuel level. And if I can, I'm going to add a little more gas. That looks, I'm down to about three quarters of a tank, so I'm, I could probably get a gallon or so in. One of the difficulties with an ultralight <laughs> is fueling it. The fuel I have to pre-mix with uh, oil to assure that uh, I don't have any problems with my two-cycle engine. This is a Rotax. The fuel mix is 50 to 1. Uh, Kawasaki's are 40 to 1, by the way, and seem to not have the... Uh, the same problems with uh, seizing up every once in a while. But I'm thinking that with the Rotax, more often that it, it's a matter of a cylinder going too lean. Or someone absolutely forgetting to add the oil at all. Okay. I don't know if this is all going to fit or not. It's going to be pretty close. 
I don't think it's all gonna fit. Uh, that sounds full. Take a peek. I can put just a little bit more in, but not much. She goes right up to the pole. Yep. Now keeping your gas tank full through the winter is a good idea. Uh, if it sets for a length of time, you can get some condensation. And the condensation is part of the, uh, the issue, um, the, the problems that occur with uh, aircraft in general. Now I have here a fiberglass fuel tank instead of aluminum. Aluminum tends to get condensation a little bit more than fiberglass, at least it seems to. Uh -huh. Anyway, we seem to be good. The tank is nice and full and I'm going to put things away.